Hi there and welcome back to Aid's Workshop. Um, I'm lost for words, I don't know where to start on this one. Um, okay, let's start with this. Standing with Ukraine, guys. Um, yeah, uh, I don't normally get political, but I'm going to break that rule on this occasion. I think it's necessary. Another thing I'm going to do, break a rule that I normally do, is ask for help. Let me explain myself, or try to as best I can. I am going to be trying to raise £500 for the British Red Cross Ukraine Appeal. So just to elaborate on that, the company I work for are giving 1% of the every sale to the appeal for the British Red Cross. Um, up to £40,000, that's what they're trying to raise. Now that's a lot of money guys, £40,000. Okay, I think my first house cost £40,000. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I think they're up to 22000 something like that. At the moment, as we stand. So that said, a team of operations managers, of which I'm included in the company, have decided that we're going to do our bit towards this appeal as well. And what we're going to do is to climb the highest mountain in South Wales, it's called Penavan, and it's in the Bracken Beacons, it's a beautiful area, I, I have been up there many times in the past. And I'm going to start, well I already have started, a Just Giving page to raise funds for this. So uh, a little trek up a mountain doesn't sound like a lot, but again I'll break another rule and give you a personal detail. I do have some serious health issues, um, I have COPD which is a lung disease, um, and doing this walk uh, up to the summit of Penivan is no mean feat for me, uh, especially given my advancing years as well. So it, yeah, it's going to be quite a challenge. So basically what I'm asking guys is if any of you out there, even if a small percentage, if 1% of you gave $1 or £1 towards my Just Giving page, um, it would get me past my personal target of £500. Um, I've added a certain amount in myself and I think we're up to about 60 70 pound after 24 hours of putting the page up so uh, thank you to those of you who have uh, gifted so far and yeah can I just ask you all guys um, dig deep um, it's all going to a great cause and it's to help these people out you know with urgent supplies and medicine and all the rest of it so that's enough on the political front and I will put in the description of the video the link to my just giving page so yeah, sorry to uh, put my hand out with the, uh, you know, with the, the begging bowl out, guys, but I just feel that it's something I want to do. And I am in a position where I get a lot of people, a lot of yourselves watching me, and I'm just going to try and appeal to your nature. Okay, thank you guys, thank you so much. And I'm sure those fantastic people, brave people in Ukraine, will be so grateful. Okay, so that said, link is in the description. Do what you can, guys. Thank you very much. And we're going to move on and do a bit now. Um, I'll show you some of the recent arrivals of Bits and Bobs. And we're going to do a bit now on a different project away from the mini lathe. I've got a little job for my brother-in-law, which I'm going to be doing. And we'll get on with that. So a gift has arrived from a viewer and a company, actually. But uh, I'm no affiliation to this company. So it's, uh, let me see if I can bring it into shot. Modelfixings.co.uk. Now, I did buy some... Uh, I think it was BA Volts or Taps or something like that from this company some time ago. And on the back of my last video, where I was uh, trying to pull Swarf out the back of the chuck with an, uh, with an Allen key and I didn't have my pliers to hand, um, Ian at Model Fixings, who obviously had my address and has watched my channel, um, sent me this pair of uh, long pair of forceps. So that's brilliant. I'll keep, I can now keep those by the lathe. I haven't got to keep looking for my pliers. They'll be stuck beside the lathe and I can use these for pulling swarf out of the lathe. So Ian, thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, model fixings. I think they do bearings as well. Modelbearings.co.uk, modelfixings.co.uk. All sorts of BA nuts, bolts, fastenings, metric, allen keys. It's, uh, I've been on the website and uh, yeah, it's a useful source for those odd bits and bobs guys. So check that out. Um, yeah, I, people often ask me, where did you get this? Where did you get that? And this is going on my suppliers list. And it's one of those, you know, you, you buy something on a website and you think, oh, this is really good. And then you forget where you got it from. So I've got a little book now with all the uh, useful uh, websites and what have you. And uh, I've forgotten all about this one. So this will be going on my list as well. So once again, Ian, thank you very much. 
So I think I said this little project was for my brother-in-law. It's actually for my niece and her husband, Mike. So, right, what we've got is, you can see this aluminium channel. And what I'm going to be building is a carriage um, that rolls back and forth in this aluminium channel. And basically on that carriage will be this. It's all uh, 316 stainless. This will be turned with a, a circular pad on the end of it. And that carriage will run in and out of there. And as part of the carriage, we're going to have, um, obviously we're going to machine some watches. There'll be rollers fitted in here on shafts. And again, there'll be rollers um, fitted in a different direction as well so that it won't rub against the back so that that's basically how it's going to work it's in fact i think it's that way around um yeah i'm not quite sure at present i haven't got a good look at the drawings so we're gonna have to machine these up these are just uh tig welded together pieces of 316 stainless box um again this is a cover mechanism an opening cover mechanism around a swimming pool so we got chlorine all sorts going on so 316 stainless and the aluminium all around the area is already anodized all the rest of it and it's all fitted so we've got to make the carriages for the sliding retractable roof we've got various bits of rod that fit the bearings and the rollers all the rest of it so we're going to start machining all these bits for this little project quite looking forward to this it'd be a bit of fun so to make a start um I'm just squaring off the top of this central box. I've got the two outer boxes sat on parallels, so I've got this reference. It was just a sawn cut. Get that somewhere near. So it's just about cleaned up. We're a little bit off the surface of the box section of these ones that are lying down. I don't want to go too far with this because I'll be removing too much of the weld. Uh, it does seem to have penetrated nice and deep. So I'm just walk, walking the cutter around the periphery. Just trying to get a reference surface. Something flat. Wind is blowing outside and uh, there's a few ornaments on the outside of the shed hanging on strings which are banging about. That's what the clunking noises are. So we'll just get to that end. I thought I'd go with a small cutter on this as I'm, uh, as you can see in this zone here, I'm just squeezing on the outside of the box so it's not this great gripping way of doing it. Um, I could have put a little screw jack inside I suppose. But um, these edges are actually bowed out a little bit during the weld. There's the wind again. Um, so this is actually holding them flat so I've got somewhere, somewhere near where I want to be. So uh, I think I could go down. Do I want to go down any further than that? It should be the same size across here as it is here. I don't think it's critical. Um, well, I know it's not critical. Okay, I'm going to um, perhaps take another point one off, I think. There we go. So without moving it in the vise, um, I'm just skimming over the ends of these two boxes until I get to a flush point with this, with the main central box. So it does squeal a bit. Just on the ends when it's taking the full engagement of cut. It gives a little squeal. I've already done the other side. So this is going to give me a square plane between the top, which I've just machined, and 90 degree face. And that's the reference to be able to get everything sort of squared up. So I'm going to do this on the other side afterwards. Uh, let's just put a cut on. I've got 0.8 to come off. Yeah. 
Yeah, howls a bit, guys. Yuck. As I said at the start, this is 316 stainless, so it's good tough stuff. And then we got some. Very nearly there now. to come off. So I flipped it 180 now. Just gonna get a touch off. Up there. And we're gonna clean this side up now. Don't know where we are exactly with it. But we'll clean this side up back flush with the box section on either end and the box is sitting again on parallels down hard. See how we get on. A bit more. Let's see where that brings us. Yeah, it's all out square, but that's not to worry. That's why we're machining it. So this is the fourth face for the squareness now. Let's just check it for high points. Looks like, no, we're all right. Right, let's have another cut. Point two. So yeah, you get the gist, guys. We're just going to flash this over until the central piece of box section comes down. Comes down level with the box sections on either end. Yeah, it's just that high point, that corner, isn't it? So I've set the drill to two holes on position. Um, they're nine mil in from the outer edge and 15 mil in from the outside of the box. And I've got a 6.9 mil drill, and this goes right through. Uh, basically the hole in the top of this has got to be eight mil. I'll put a reamer up for that. And the one in the bottom face has got to be seven mil. I'm just going to do it with a 6.9 and if I've got to open it up after I can. Okay, so that's a 6.9 mil drill all the way through. So, um, yeah, I'll probably put a 7.5 in now and then put an 8 mil reamer up. So, very quick little job. Um, these rollers, uh, as they stand, um, I'll show you step one, is turn them down to 24mm diameter over a length of 26 So, basically, whack it in the chuck somewhere. Um, bring him out until he sticks out about 30mm. Something like that. Bring my centre in into the bearing. There's a bearing in both ends of these. Just pull the part onto the bearing. Lock everything up. And that's it, it's in the chuck. Okay, so that said, turn the tool up. I've got a zero set already. Let's just set a zero on the face. There's a touch. Okay, so I need to go 26 mil back. This is very quick, this operation. I'm leaving one mil on the diameter and I'm roughing it clean out, or two mil, mil aside. So. Straight in with a turning tool, taking 12 odd mil off in one go up to 26 which is there let's just stop and clear that swarf not that we can call it swarf okay put the tail stock back take a half mil that leaves one mil on the diameter quick hand bed across there that's that done 
then final cut is there, feed on, turn the last arm out of. Feed could go a bit faster. There we are, that's one done, final little housekeeping job, tiny little chamfer where I've removed it all, now this is a very thin wall but it is to draw in, just a little chamfer on that leading edge, and that's another one done. Okay, so um, one more of those to do, I'll bring you around the other side, give you a better view of what I'm doing, so I'll just put the uh, part of in the chuck first. Sticking out about 30 mil, something like that. So I put two low, tail stock in. Loosen the jaws, pull them onto the centre of the tail stock, tighten the jaws, that keeps it all nice and square. A little bit of pressure, turning tool in, touch on the face, set to zero. Go in until I've got to my point which says one mil on the DRO, which I've just passed. Okay, let's turn that feed off. Right, so I'm going to bring you around the other side and just show you this uh, ripping the material off. Where is it now? Um, I'm turning it down to 25 in one cut and it is 35 now. So I'm taking 10 mil off with this cut. It's only nylon, so no great worries. Okay, there's a tool there in the bottom, so 10 mil off in one cut. Difficult to hold the camera still, guys. I do apologise. And it's difficult with one hand to keep that feed rate. Good. There we are. That's the 10 mil off. So down to leave half mil now. Or well, one mil on the diameter that leaves. So that's half mil reading on the DRO. in the way you can't see now. <laughs> That's into 26, so I'll just clear that swap. Hang on, I'm having to swap hands with the camera here, guys. Let's just clear that out of the way. Back in with the tailstock. Bit of tension. I'm trying to keep it going, right? Swap hands with the camera again. Go into my reading. I'm using the dial as a zero on the dial. Turn feet on. Slot truck. Engage and take the finishing cut. Quite weird looking through the viewfinder, not looking at the job. <laughs> okay, so chamfer on the end now, and that's it. all four done. So next step in the procedure, let's remove that big chunk of nylon off the end, which we don't want. So hold in the chuck. Um, I'm just going to come back to that shoulder where I faced it to, just beyond. And I'm going to face down through here and face it off. Now we might get a bit of a wrap around. Let me just pull the swarf out of the way. Not too bad. <laughs> Good reactions there, it shot straight past my head. <laughs> so there we are, that's that chopped off there. Um, yeah, four, just chop them off. That was the second one. Uh, so two down and two to go. So let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can replicate that. <laughs> yeah, I had to uh, dive out the way sharpish then. It shot over my right shoulder. I'll be a bit more cautious this time. Stand off to one side a bit. Uh, wouldn't do it again, would it? Okay, so yeah, quick, dirty, simple. Off with the rubbish. One more. Let's see if we can have more fun in games, shall we? Keep the camera rolling. <laughs> so 
So I checked the first one to this, and yeah, 26 mil long. So I'm just going straight into the pine tool, plow it in there. And that one didn't have any games either. Ah. Yes, there we are. Anyway, so that's more chopped off. Um, I need to face them to 24 mil long now. So what I'm going to do is take this one out, measure it where it is now, do a touch off, face it to length. We've all seen me do that sort of thing before. So yeah, basically grab it. See where we are. 25.3. Okay, so 1.3 off there. So I'll just put it somewhere near. I mean, I could have put a backstop in the chuck, but... Um, 1.3, okay. So I'll just touch on. I mean, it's not critical. There's a touch. Come out. 1.3. There's one. 1.3. Okay. I'll put a little chamfer on the outside now. Shall I, or shall I bore it out first? Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Yeah, I'll put the chamfer on now. Should still be able to pick up that edge. Okay. So I'll repeat that operation with all four to bring them all to 24 by 24. I've left a bearing in that end uh, just to give a bit of support because it's very thin wall now and that's where I'm squeezing it on more than anything. So I've got to bore this end out now to take the bearing will be the next step. Um, but yeah, four to machine to 24 mil long. Let's see, where are we? 25.6, no worries, 1.6. So boring out for the bearing. It's 22 mil diameter. I've preset a zero on my DRO on the first one. So I part in the truck, touch on the face, give myself a zero. I know I got a board of seven deep. Okay, so that leaves a mil in. So I go in seven mil deep, hand deep. So seven mil on the DRO. Okay, let's get rid of that, so you can see. Going in there, that leaves 0.4 in the ball. 7 mil deep again. And then finally, into my zero. 7 mil deep. Okay, um, so if I grab one of the bearings now, nice fit, jobs are good. Um, yeah, good push fit in there, I have to push it in with my thumb, quite a bit of effort. And there we have it, that 35 by 40 mil roller is now a 24 by 24. Um, I know the wall thickness is a bit thin around the bearings, but for what it's doing, uh, it's only a bump stop. Um, yeah, so that's it. Happy days on those. Uh, so I have done the first one, so that's two of those now. Um, two bearings fitted in those two. Whoop. And exactly the same, using the same settings on the final two. So, yeah, part in. Touch on the face, set to zero, wind off the mill, straight into 70, That's another one done. <laughs> yeah, these things are quite quick when you 
once you get going and you get set up for it where's the last one there it is just as well keep the camera rolling till the end shall I touch on that set a zero three cut finish There we are, last bearing back in. Little rag on there, get rid of that. Come on. Okay. Um, yeah, all done. So I need to order some washers um, to go in either side of the rollers just to keep them spaced off. And the idea being is I've got these pins pressed in with a 7mm step. Um, well, they're not pressed in, they're not right in. And then I'm going to pin over on both sides just to hold them in place. So, um, yeah, that's step one of these little uh, load carriers, shall we say. So that's the rollers that keep the sideways deflection away. And then all the weight is going to be carried by two more rollers in here. So, yeah, we're getting there now. Um, pretty much... A little pin has dropped out of there. Pop it back in in a second. Anyway, um, so, yeah, that's step one. We're getting there. Don't know how well it shows, but, uh, yeah, they pretty much are running. These rollers are stuck out 3mm on the underside. And they're pretty much running on the rollers. So, uh, yeah, we're... We're getting there with it. Um, time to move on to the next stage, but uh, that'll be for another episode, I think. So a few more bits and pieces have come in um, that I've ordered. And for the mini lathe, um, some linear scales. Now, this is the first time I've opened these boxes. Um, not, you know, the top-notch stuff. Hang on, let me just take it out. So, yeah, this one here, um, I will take it out of the bag. So it's a linear magnetic scale um, with a little remote reader. So that'll go in our control panel somewhere. Um, I think it might even have magnetic uh, magnets on the back. But yeah, it's a remote D uh, DRO scale. So this is going to be mounted on the back side of the lathe bed. And I've bought another one. Um, let me just bring it in. Oh yeah, here it is. Uh, another one that's 150 mil long. This is the 300 mil one. This might be a little bit long, but I'm sure we can do something. I'm sure we can saw it off in some way, shape, or form to make it the right length. So we are, yeah. So we're gonna have two axis DRO on the mini lathe going forward. Um, that might be a bit of fun trying to fit these and seeing how good they are. But that's one set of bits and pieces that came in. So moving on from that. Another couple of units came in. The stepper motor I'm going to use to drive the lead screw. And also the uh, stepper controller as well. We'll go into more detail on these as we go forward. But that's those two. Um, oh, where's my little bag? Okay. Uh, one more item. Little pulse signal generator um, to drive that system. Much the same as I've done before. And let me pull out these bits and bobs. And again, a um, couple of pulleys and a drive belt for uh, linking the motor to the uh, lead screw. So, yeah, we've got a few bits of bobs come in, uh, plenty to go on with. I've now got my grease for uh, fitting the spindle. Um, oh, on that note, let me just grab the spindle. I have got it by here. Um, it's been mentioned to me that... Um, the key on the spindle, let me just open it up, I don't want to get all muck in the bearing and what have you. The key on the spindle, let me show it, there it is, it is very small. Um, yes, I could uh, elongate this key, um, 
and based on the fact that it was very soft aluminium. The uh, pulley I showed being machined was made out of very soft aluminium, um, which is the one for the mocha, but the pulley the soft, <coughs> excuse me, that's my COPD. <laughs> The pulley that's on the spindle is actually a real tough aluminium, uh, the one I cut the keyway in. So, um, yeah, I'm going to try it like it is with the key it's got. It'll be under compression because the preload will be through the pulley, as it were, so it'll all be clamped up fairly tight. So I'm going to try it like it is, and if going forward I get problems with wear in the key and what have you, I can always put a longer key in. So that's where we are with that one. So, um... There we are, that's a few bits and pieces that have come into the workshop over the last week. And um, There's lots of bits and pieces here now that are going to be um, pretty much stopping me being held up getting on with the mini lathe project. So let's go back to my uh, speech at the beginning, standing with Ukraine. Um, guys, a pound, a dollar would be great towards this great cause. Um, the link is in the description to, you know, do a little thing, um, which I'm trying to do a big thing, but do a little bit to help me towards my goal of raising £500 towards the British Red Cross Ukraine appeal. Um, and, you know, let's hope that uh, the world becomes a better place and that all this uh, comes to an end very soon. So anyway, guys, on that sombre note, Thank you so much for watching. If you're going to make a donation, thank you so much for that. And thank you for uh, subscribing, all your new subscribers and all the rest of you. So, uh, yeah, it's this is quite dear to my heart, guys. Uh, again, as I said, it's, it's a little bit political, perhaps, but uh, I think uh, it's a just cause. So, anyway, thanks in anticipation for any donations you may give. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching guys, thanks for subscribing, and hopefully we'll see you all very soon in far happier ties, times Sorry, for the people of Ukraine. I'm not going to cut this bit out where I made a what's it there because this is heartfelt. Cheers now.